Well, it's mail time. Uh, and I got this in here. Uh, I guess for my unboxing, I'll go ahead and use the uh, Kubi Mizu. Uh, good old Tigwas design. Because, uh, well, that's what I carried to work today. Let's see. Looks like uh, a little petrified fish. And, um, well, I guess there's something extra that came with it. So, uh, that's interesting. This guy I ordered on Amazon. But it wasn't one that was actually in stock. So, well, first off, I'm curious what we got here. Commemorative fish, or commemorative gift for the fourth anniversary. Yeah, that's kind of neat. I honestly didn't know they'd been around that long. Alright, get something in a little pouch. Oh, that's cute. Looks like a little copper fish. Not so much a pry bar that I can see, but definitely a bottle opener here on the front, so that's kind of neat. Alrighty. Let's see, what do we got in the box? Well, we're going to have to go ahead and uh, cut a couple of stickers for that. That's what we're going to have to do. All right, we got that. We got a little microfiber cloth. And here we are with the knife inside this little Ziploc bag that's actually branded with petrified fish. And here we go. We got a front flipper. Kerchunk. And yeah, it definitely looks like a straight razor. Obviously, this thing is a locking knife, so that's really not going to... Uh, be super conducive to it but uh you know for doing a lot of utility cuts and stuff like that i thought it was pretty neat we have uh olive wood handles on these guys and feels certainly pretty nice it's got a decent amount of chatoyants going on titanium milled clip seems pretty stiff but uh yeah we'll have to see how that actually gets in and out of the pocket obviously we have a little lanyard thing going on here in the back uh, yeah, nested liners on both sides, as I can see here. And, yeah, there's minimal, but we do have some, uh, weight relieving going on here. Nice action so far. The centering, not super great off the top, but, uh, you know, that's something that can definitely be worked on here. Yeah, and because this thing has a, a nice, uh, hollow grind going on here, you can... Easily flick that out with, uh, well, I was just using my index finger there, but uh, obviously you got the front flipper. And the top of here is nicely crowned, by the way, in case uh, I didn't cover that a little bit earlier on, so that's nice. There's been a couple of Tucson's that have done that, uh, and the uh, the Migron uh, kind of budget knives have done that, but not a whole lot else in the, uh, in the budget realm has really bothered to do a full crown spine. So, kind of neat to uh, see there. Obviously, uh, I suppose with yeah, a little bit of practice, you can do a spidey flick on that thing. But uh, it is also nice that uh, we got in here. Oh yeah, 154 CM steel. I thought this was 14C28N, but there was a reason why this one was a bit more expensive. But yeah, this thing seems pretty neat. Fairly gentleman-esque, I suppose. Yeah, kind of a uh, darkened hardware. It's, uh, you know, fairly gray. It's not uh, black. So that that does add a little bit to the uh, niceties there. I got a nice dark band going on on the uh, the backside there. Obviously, your mileage is going to vary on uh, those because they are a natural wood product. These things do feel... Um, Pretty nice and uh, stable, which is good. It uh, 
that to me at least uh, reminds me a lot of the uh, uh, Guiborcia wood that um, Civivi ends up using for theirs. Uh, I don't know if they've done any uh, stabilization on the wood or anything, you know, that being uh, pressure heated with uh, impregnating some resin in there or something like that. Um, but, I mean, with the rigidity of it and everything, it seems pretty good. But, I mean, olive wood has also been used in uh, London eyes for a very, very long time. Uh, and I'm too lazy to grab it at the moment, but I do have a... Uh, uh, what the hell is it? Well, maybe I will grab it just because I forgot the name of the darn thing. Let's <laughs> get. Uh -huh. Yeah, open aisle, that's it. I was uh, getting it mixed up in my head with the other French company, Laguel, or uh, however the hell you pronounce that. But yeah, this is olive wood as, as well. And yeah, you can see that. Um, this one definitely does have a bit more uh, chatoyance going on from the finish. But then again, uh, this knife is also like uh, 16 to 20 books. And this one was, uh, you know, just a little bit more than that. <laughs> Uh, geez, I wish I remembered off the top of my head what this thing actually, uh, came to. I think it was somewhere in the $60 range. That sounds about right. But, uh, yeah, this thing is known as the Scholar. Um, they do have, uh, I just opened it up recently in another one, but hey, it's in my pocket today. This, uh, this kind of smaller guy here is known as the Scout. And this one is the, uh, the PFE-02. And this one is a PFE04. Uh, I think maybe they have a, a five and a six, but uh, I don't know necessarily if they've made it out there or if I just didn't really find them super interesting. But uh, yeah, there you go. This one's a uh, quite interesting. Definitely very uh, straight razor esque uh, inspired with the uh, the hollow grind and the uh, kind of shape there. But uh, this thing has you know. Fairly decent, um, not fully rounded, but uh, definitely appropriate choil. So you can uh, really get a good grip on that for uh, doing some things. Pinch grip also feels nice. And uh, yeah, you can sneak up quite a bit on that for uh, some more detailed and uh, razor type of work. So yeah, overall I'm quite happy with it. Uh, the build quality seems super nice. Uh, obviously I haven't taken this guy apart, but... Petrified Fish really has uh, seemed to uh, up their uh, their game on their hardware compared to the, uh, I think the uh, the PF919 was the uh, the first one that I got from them and ended up stripping out some uh, clip screws. But the uh, the Beluga uh, and uh, this Scout here, they've been uh, pretty good with the hardware, so uh, I'm glad that's behind them because uh, they are coming out with some pretty interesting designs. Also kind of interesting that... Uh, some more places like White Mountain Knives are uh, starting to uh, carry them in stock and stuff like that. So that's pretty interesting. But, uh, all right. Well, this was uh, fun. I think I have some more knives coming soon. So this will probably be the uh, the start of another, you know, first impressions video. Uh, and I can't really forget the uh, little copper uh, bottle opener there. So that's... You know, just kind of a neat extra thing to go along with it. But, uh, alrighty, catch you soon. The time has come to open more boxes. Uh, let's see, I'm going to have a couple of different uh, unboxing knives here. But the first one I feel like using is the little uh, Boker USB guy. If you're not familiar with these things, pretty darn interesting. It's, uh, it's an out the front. It's uh, aluminum handles here. Just a little tiny bit of uh, machining and stuff like that going on there. Uh, D2 blade on it, so nothing super super crazy. But uh, Boker does a, a pretty decent job with their heat treats on most things. And it's coated. So, yeah. Super fun and fidgety. And uh, this is under two inches. So, hey, it's California legal. And it's not double-edged, which means it's actually California legal, not just size-wise. This one is from Blade HQ, uh, and I ended up purchasing this one, uh, 
Yeah, it was a little kind of an uh, interesting thing. This is an SRM knife or San Renmu. And they accidentally uh, labeled these things uh, wrong in their database for a while. I do believe it's changed now. Uh, this one is the Asika, or A-S-I-K-A, I, I want to say. Yeah. It's not going to say that there, but that's the name of the knife. This looks like uh, some bullshit, actually. <laughs> yes, they uh, ended up um, basically swapping that. That's great. Okay, so, essentially, this is the smaller version uh, of the knife, which uh, I will probably end up sending back to them, because it's not the one that I actually purchased. The one that I purchased, it has a 3.9 inch uh, blade. This one has uh, under 3 inches, but it's a titanium frame lock with 154 cm steel. Uh, basically they had the, uh, the prices kind of backwards on them where the, uh, large size that I wanted to purchase was, um, $70 or $69.95, whereas the, uh, the larger one or the, uh, the smaller one was, uh, listed as, uh, basically like 114 or so. Um, and I bought the, uh, larger one and, uh, they basically saw the price and went, uh, no, we're giving them, uh, the smaller one. <laughs> it was not a bad knife, but, uh. Not particularly the one I want. So, yeah, I will end up um, basically sending that back on. But, uh, well, I suppose while it's out here, I can uh, at least take a decent look at it. We've got a bead blast finish here. we got got uh, set and finish on the blade. Blade seems decently thin. It's kind of a uh, straight and then uh, yeah, a little bit more of a Japanese-style Tonto kind of thing here. Doesn't seem bad. We have a titanium uh, backspacer here as well with the lanyard thing underneath there. Nicely crowned, so that's pretty cool. Have a little bit of lock bar access too, so it's not too bad to uh, close them on up. Pocket clip on this guy is just kind of folded over steel though, so that is, I guess, just a little tiny bit... Um, uh, disappointing, but, uh, hey, I, I don't think SRM is really known for doing, uh, milled pocket clips thus far. But it's got some decent jimping where I would want it. So, I mean, it's a decent modeled knife, but, uh, this guy is just, uh, quite a bit smaller than what I would actually want. So, yeah, I will, uh, probably try and talk to them and, uh, send it back since, uh, it's not the actual model that, uh, I purchased, it was the uh, the price of the model that uh, they should have had on there, so uh, I I can definitely uh, see and give them that. But <laughs> three point nine and uh, two point seven five are uh, very different numbers when it comes to the inches of a knife. So uh, all right, well that was a little bit of fun. This other one uh, is from White Mountain Knives. I might as well. Uh, Use a little Tucson here. This one's the uh, 371. Let's uh, pull this guy out of view for a moment because I haven't uh, blacked out my address and stuff. And, uh, well, y'all don't really need to know exactly where I live. So, uh, yeah, here we are. Inside here, we have more edible packing peanuts. Well, I say edible. They're made out of cornstarch, but... Uh, yeah, whatever. <laughs> Don't eat them. <laughs> but, uh, okay, so this should be the uh, Svivi um, Kiev or Kyvi Plus. Interesting that, uh, okay, there we go. Yeah. So, we got uh, that little sticker up here on the front. Might as well go in through there. I'd like a nice thin blade to be able to get inside boxes and stuff like that. A little pocket of snacks. That's nice. Alright, so this thing isn't supposed to be super huge, but it's definitely larger than the original ones by a long shot here. 
Well, that detent kind of blows. That's kind of unfortunate there. Jeez, yeah, that's uh, kind of really unfortunate. But, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can't uh, do anything about that. But, yes, this is, uh, um, if you're familiar with uh, some other knives, uh, this is definitely an Ostap Hell design. It's, uh, he did the original one, the, uh, the Kyvie or the Kiev. Uh, quite a while back, probably, I don't know, it's probably been about a year or so for it. Uh, but it was, uh, fairly small, and it's a Kiridashi kind of styled knife. This one, uh, basically kind of, uh, cranks that up a little bit. We have, like, a, it's less than a three-inch blade, 2.6 or 2.75, I don't remember exactly off the top of my head here. It's using, there we are, Nitro V blade steel, which is also great. Uh, almost, uh, I think all of them are G10 handles. Uh, I don't think they do any micarta versions of it, at least not yet. This one in particular had uh, a little tiny bit of um, carbon fiber, a uh, little laminate uh, thing on top of it. But they ended up uh, kind of fading that in on both sides, so it looks a little neat. And it was a whole dollar more than the other variants. So there's that. Yep, the pocket clip is uh, very, very small. Uh, I don't have uh, an initial version of the uh, Lakai V here, uh, mostly because I got a Best Tech Tulip. And uh, they are, as near as I really want to say, they're basically the same kind of idea and knife. It's just one for a different company here. But, uh, yeah, trying to do that reach around there. This thing has a uh, very small or uh, light detent. And I can kind of see that as it's just kind of for front flipping. And uh, some people do like to do that. But because the uh, handle kind of uh, has this ramp here, it is just a little bit uh, difficult to not have your finger hit that when you're trying to do that. It... it Definitely will take a little bit of uh, practice and getting used to on this knife in particular. Um, so in that particular way, I, I do kind of want uh, a little bit more uh, detent uh, strength on this. You know, not a huge amount, but uh, this is uh, fairly light, unfortunately. But the action on it seems pretty decent. Uh, we have basically like a high saber grind, I suppose you would end up calling that. Not uh, absolutely incredibly thin um, coming from uh, Civivi. That's actually just a little bit surprising. But, I mean, in general, with uh, the kind of things that this blade is kind of designed for, yeah, I suppose that makes sense. You got some uh, nice jumping up top here. Uh, really does a good job for doing um, utility cuts and things like that. And with the blade up there... Kind of gets your uh, wrist in a little bit more raised and ergonomic position rather than, um, yeah, rather than having the blade uh, quite down there. So uh, for some of those things, cutting down on a surface and stuff like that works out pretty well. However, because of this blade shape and all that sort of stuff, it's, uh, it's a little iffy there. Um, if you are trying to uh, cut things up in the air, if you're trying to get through like a lot of cardboard and stuff like that, um, the way that this is shaped uh, without having any kind of a uh, hook or any of that sort of stuff uh, and the way that the, uh, the blade ends up pointing, yeah, you can really easily slip out of that. So this thing is probably good for a lot of utility cuts. Maybe not a great EDC unless you're absolutely really, really into that thing in particular. Still kind of neat, and I do like having kind of a, a, a larger Kiridashi here. Uh, let's see, the, uh, the tulip is actually somewhere else. I end up using that to uh, uh, peel a lot of uh, oranges and stuff like that, or at least get them started for it. But uh, I do have this guy here. This is a six leaf. Uh, it's the SL13. Yeah, and it's, uh, it's uh, still a little bit larger than the, uh, the Best Tech Tulip is. And the uh, the original Kyvi, but uh, hey, I do like this guy quite a bit. 
This one is uh, in D2 steel, though, so nowhere near the uh, corrosion resistance, uh, which is why I've uh, been using that uh, Best Tech Tulip, because it's in uh, 14C28N. Still not an absolute juggernaut of uh, stainlessness. Uh, it's certainly more than the 13C26 that it replaced. But, uh, you know, it's, it does a heck of a lot better job than uh, D2 would when you're uh, cutting citrus. Because, uh, yeah, all sorts of acids and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting there. A little sad on this guy in particular. Because I definitely uh, did choose the uh, 11... I don't remember if it was the 1147 or the 1174... Either way, the uh, the small one was not the one that I purchased when I was on the uh, the page for it. So, uh, yeah, all right. Still, it is kind of nice to uh, at least take a look at uh, some of uh, SRM's a uh, little bit more higher-end scale knives. Uh, they do do some of them in their, I think mostly in their fantasy uh, line that, that will use uh, S35VN and stuff like that. And I haven't really played around with uh, much of those so far, but... Uh, that's all right. Maybe I will at some point. Or, uh, well, heck, maybe I accidentally already have because SRM uh, is a uh, fairly well-known um, uh, OEM designer for a lot of other knives. So, I don't know. Maybe I have. <laughs> but, all righty. That's basically what I got here. Uh, I will be purchasing another knife from Blade HQ tomorrow. They have a new... Uh, entry into their uh, Dessert Warrior uh, series, but it's not a Boker. Uh, it's a uh, Civivi Elementum done in that same kind of way. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Uh, it's probably going to be in uh, quite high demand, but uh, as they've uh, already gone on record saying um, that uh, all of those Dessert Warrior patterns, including all of these guys, uh, the Boker um, Kalashnikovs, uh, they're not limited runs. They just uh, don't have a huge amount, and they end up being in large demand, but they will be restocked. So, yeah, don't, uh, if you're uh, afraid that you've uh, missed out on one of these things, they will be back in stock, um, so I wouldn't really spend ridiculous collecting uh, prices on eBay or anything like that. You'll just uh, you'll just have to end up playing the waiting game, and you can go ahead and get a hold of them. So, uh, all right, that's uh, basically what I have here, and uh, yeah, I'll be back in a little bit. Well, these right here aren't such a subtle hint as to what should be in this box right here. But, in order of uh, being all mysterious and surprising and everything, I'm not going to use any of these to do the unboxing. I'll use the uh, Tucson TS-162. Why? Because that's what was in my pocket. And I already opened a package or two with this that had some desk fans in there. So, it just felt appropriate. All right, here's a Civival box. Come on, buddy. There you go. Of course, we get the pouch and the snacks. All right, here we are, Civivi Elementum. To uh, go along with the rest of these here. Until this particular version came out, I wasn't super incredibly interested in the, uh, in the Elementum. I already have the Elementum button lock that uh, I do like because it's a bit larger. This one is, uh, you know, just under... A three inch blade and because of that it's three and a half fingers or so but uh yeah still wanted it we have uh g10 scales on this one that has the uh the different die layers on top rather than uh, aluminum scales that all three of the kalashnikovs are 
Looks like the uh, pivot color is different. It's purple, whereas it's yellow on all of uh, the uh, Kalashnikovs. But we still have the uh, the green and the blue back there. But we don't have a center one that's green going on. Yeah. But we do have yellow liners. They are proud of the scales. and something that uh, also kind of turned me off just a little bit to the elementum in general. But, uh, I mean, it's not a bad knife uh, by any stretch of the imagination. I mean, it's... Uh, Incredibly popular for a reason. So, yeah, this thing is uh, fun. and It uh, amuses me just like uh, the rest of these guys do. I did actually uh, carry this guy today through work and stuff like that. All sorts of fun. But, uh, yeah, I do have another Civivi coming. Uh, I don't know. It'll probably get here sometime next week or something like that. And I had a... Uh, uh, same place, Blade HQ, um, is having a uh, discontinued Civivi and Wii sale. And I decided I was going to pick up a uh, Trailblazer XL in uh, Damascus steel with uh, uh, G10 and carbon fiber laminate stuff. But uh, hey, it was, it's neat to be able to pick up one of those guys for uh, 50 bucks instead of, I think, they were 80 something, maybe 86 originally or something like that. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that should be interesting. It's also a fairly large knife, uh, that's a slip joint, so, yeah, that's always kind of interesting. Oh, do we have anything different in, uh, the documentation or anything like that? It's, uh, it's color. I'm not used to seeing that with most other Civivis. I mean, it's mostly just green, but, uh, that's okay. Let's see, the microfiber cloth is, um, a green of some sort. <laughs> it's, it is a very vibrant green. Not quite lime, uh, definitely brighter than that. Yeah, we got their little, um, thingle thingle here. And then just a standard elementum. Oh yeah, I did want to, uh, check on that. Yes, this one still is, uh, hollow ground. I was uh, actually a little worried on that because um, some of the uh, manufacturer exclusive things have changed things up. Like, oh, uh, we got away with the, or we got, yeah, we did away with the hollow ground and it's just a flat grind now. And like, well, you know, if you are going to have kind of the, that landing patch up there rather than the uh, full flat grind, I do appreciate if it's at least a hollow ground there just to, uh, kind of keep that uh, nice and thin so yeah nice knife we don't have a whole lot of texturing on there um, and that definitely makes sense as to all the uh, the different colors that they had to uh, paint on top of that I honestly don't know how durable that's going to be because I know they don't have yeah it's, it's not like they they've done just a crazy speckled uh, mix of uh, Damascus steels on there. So this is definitely a coating on the top of it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know exactly how long uh, that will end up lasting, but uh, hey, I suppose the same could be said out of these guys. And, uh, well, they certainly do a good job of uh, keeping it on there, but they are aluminum, so yeah, you can ding them up a little easily. But, hey, there you go. Yeah, that is... Um, <laughs> It's not a bad color, but not exactly an attractive color, I, I would say. It's uh, kind of a mix between uh, maybe what might have come out of the backside of a uh, of an infant and uh, some sort of strange citrus fruit. I don't know, a citron or something like that. <laughs> but, uh, okay. Well, that's what I have now. I suppose uh, a little bit later on, so right after this, uh, for all y'all, I will go ahead and um, open up that Trailblazer XL that I'm uh, excited to see, and uh, I will call this another one of those uh, unboxing and first impression videos. So, until then, you know, keep it sweet. Well, I apparently lied. I have some other knives here that uh, came in before I uh, really compiled the other video. So, I will go ahead and do those, but you're probably familiar with that because the video didn't end as soon as I said it probably would. Alrighty, well, for the unboxing knife, I guess I'll use the TS-145. I've been enjoying this thing recently. 
Let's see, I got one here from uh, Blade HQ, if it's not obvious from the, uh, the little sticker thing going on there. And I think this is a Tucson. That's a... Uh, yes, it is. Alrighty. Cool. So there is that. We'll go ahead and uh, pull this guy out as well. Oh, I got uh, another one of those Blade HQ knife... Uh, care package thingies and this is a Civivi knife uh, Blade HQ uh, recently I think it's probably still ongoing at least by the time that uh, I've got here um, uh, uh, they're getting rid of um, you know their uh, discontinued models and stuff like that on sale so I decided I was gonna pick one up and this one May or may not interest some people. But uh, I thought it was neat. Heck yeah, I still think it's neat. Okay. So, yeah, here we go. This is the Trailblazer XL. And this thing has some decently thin blade stock going on here. This is, um, you know, obviously their uh, Damascus steel. Now it's got a 9CR18 MOV uh, blade core to it. And they've basically uh, recently kind of uh, done those a bit darker. Uh, this almost feels like it has a, a bit of a hollow grind to it. Yeah, it's certainly possible. But why I said uh, a lot of people probably aren't going to be supremely interested in it, as you saw earlier with me opening up. Yeah, this is... Um, uh, not a locking knife. It's a uh, slip joint there. I could probably get that action just a little bit better. It feels a little stiff, but hey, I do like the fact that it has a nice uh, half stop on there. Uh, I do think they have, uh, they did make this um, in other uh, uh, blade steel on there. That's the word I'm looking for. Sorry about that. Um, uh, but I think it was D2, so it wasn't super, super interesting. But, uh, yeah, this one's discontinued. Um, and, uh, hey, this thing, uh, when it was new, I think it went somewhere in the neighborhood of the 80s, like 82 or 85 bucks or something like that. But, hey, since it was discontinued and on sale, got it for 50 bucks or 49.95 or whatever. I thought that was pretty darn good. This thing is nice and thin, too. It's, um quite nice uh this thing is uh, essentially titanium and um carbon fiber actually let me see i don't believe this is titanium i suppose i can look here yeah it is steel okay it's just got that same kind of a uh sand blast or bead blast that you end up seeing on there but yeah this also has a Carbon fiber on here. It does look kind of like it's probably a, um, you know, a carbon fiber laminate over G10. But, uh, I don't know. I guess it would depend. Let me see if I can't pop one of these front scales off. Uh, taking a look at the back side will definitely let me know. All right. Well, we got T8 hardware instead of T6. That's actually a little bit of a surprise going on here for us Vivi. Some of them do, but not all of them. All right. Yeah, that's definitely uh, uh, carbon fiber laminate on top of G10, which is fine. That's basically what I was uh, expecting. This thing isn't uh, super crazy fancy or anything like that. We do have a, a couple of hidden screws underneath the scale here. Nice skeletonization going on, though. This is uh, pretty easy to uh, deal with. And it does look like uh, I can swap that pocket clip, so hey. I am certainly happy to have this thing. I was kind of eyeing it for uh, quite a while and then uh, forgot about it. So when it showed up on their uh, sale, I decided that uh, I was going to have it. So yeah, uh, they do also have a um, promotion going on at the moment that if you buy a Civivi thing, they'll give you some of the stuff here. Trying to look for, there we are. Okay, they said patch. 
This thing is uh, rubber, though. It's uh, it's definitely not. Well, maybe I'm wrong on that, or it's well. <laughs> okay, so yes, it is rubber. It just has uh, Velcro on the other side here. But yeah, it's for uh, we and Savivi. Kind of surprised that uh, they don't have Sun Cut on there as well, seeing as how those have uh, now made it to other retailers besides just Amazon. But yeah, there you go. And a little Wii Knife thing. Yeah, you always see those in all the little uh, knife packages. And then a whole bunch of other stuff. There's a Civivi sticker. We got, uh, looks like a Wii Banter. We got an Elementum. We got an, uh, what is that, an Arrakis? Uh, something from Ice Room. Um, that's one of the, the new ones that I don't remember the name off the top of my head. We got a Praxis, and, uh, I own this one too in that same color. Uh, starts with a C. Cogent. Uh, that's what that is. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, what is that? Vision R? I think something like that. But yeah, that's cool to, uh, get a whole bunch of those, uh, nice stickers. I certainly have a couple of them from, um, other knives that I'd purchased, but, uh, yeah. And then, of course, the other stuff you get with a Civivi. We got uh, a little bit of a brand insert thing here. We got a uh, microfiber cloth. And, of course, that little green thing just like this. Going, hey, do you like it? Leave us a review. All that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, this thing, <laughs> I think it was purposely designed for it to not to be a single hand open. Probably to uh, help with some um, European laws. Uh, I think um, Germany, for one, uh, you absolutely cannot have a way to open a knife one-handed. It must be two-handed. Really ridiculous law, I know. But, yeah, this thing's got a decent walk and talk on it. Like I said, I could probably improve the, uh, the action, at least on that first part, a little bit. feels just a little bit soft, but it feels mostly like it's just tension on the pivot there. But, yeah, super, super neat. All right, and, and then Blade HQ's thing. I mostly get it for the uh, the microfiber claws, which are a decent size. And uh, I do like these uh, vials of, um, uh, what is it, Tough Glide here. And, um, you know, it, it does a pretty decent job at uh, doing uh, all of that um, corrosion-resistant stuff. But I mostly like it for the, uh, the liquid that it's uh, suspended in because it... Uh, just, uh, I think it's probably a petroleum distillate, just like uh, a lot of the rest of the stuff. Uh, it does a really, really good job of getting rid of, uh, tape residue and stuff like that. So once you, once you're done cutting up a whole bunch of, uh, boxes and stuff like that, yeah, that, that works a treat. There's also some liquid, um, you know, generic Loctite stuff in there. Yeah, it's whatever. And, um, I guess another sticker. Sure, why not? Okay, let's move on to the other Tucson here. Okay, I think this one is the TS-332? I think that's what it is. It'll probably tell me. Yeah, it is. TS-332. Hey, a D. Antimanov uh, design. And, uh, yeah, happy to see that this one is in 14C28N, not D2. I do kind of think that this one was probably made... Um, or at least agreed upon with uh, the design specs and everything with the designer long enough ago that they actually still had more uh, 14C28N in stock for them to work with. There's this one and there's the uh, the TS340 that uh, also just recently came out. That's a Jelly Jerry that's in 14C. So they still can get a hold of some. I think they're probably having difficulty getting it on a, a large enough um, basis to be able to use that as their base steel for a whole bunch of the models that they were doing but all right enough with that this thing has uh, it's a little weird <laughs> not gonna lie here uh this is definitely a clip point but also a bit of a trailing clip point not uh more of a traditional um drop configuration than a lot of uh clips end up hitting or at least at the very least uh right there in the center where the uh, the pivot is so, yeah, this is a little different. This one uh, does come in a couple of different designs. This one has the uh, the carbon fiber insert here on the front. Uh, the other one basically um, mimics the same uh, titanium milling up here on this side. So if you uh, like that instead, go with that. This one, I just 
thought it kind of looked a little bit more attractive to myself. You don't really have uh, lock bar access there, but we do have them uh, scalloped out on both sides. I don't particularly have trouble um, disengaging that at all. Yeah, that clip really, really does nestle in there nicely. So it looks quite nice and flush. And yeah, the blade is decently buried in there, so uh, no snaggle tooth situations going on there. We got a titanium milled pocket clip. Just hearing that, it uh, sounds like it's uh, bent up just a little far so that it's, yeah. There, it is making uh, half contact on um, this particular. Um, lock bar however i do think that even if i am putting pressure there yeah no problems opening that up so yeah you don't you won't really have any trouble with uh lock bar problems on that you, really easy to uh be able to overcome that we got the detent hole which is uh, all sorts of exposed when the knife is open uh, I know that's basically a trade-off um, between having a little bit uh, more blade to handle ratio or whatever but I still, for the most part, really prefer those to uh, remain covered when the knife is open. Because if you get something in there, um, you know, some uh, sand or lint or something like that, a lot of times when you'll close it, uh, that blade isn't, um, you know, super nice and uh, detent and closed so it can uh, slightly come open on you. But that being said, that's not the end of the world. Uh, the detent on this is pretty darn good of course i can fail it if i absolutely want to but um it takes very very minimal amounts of effort to uh fling this guy open here still fairly thick blade stock i think this is 3.8 millimeters as heck that's kind of the average for most two sons here but uh yeah this comes down ridiculously thin behind the edge Whew, this is like um some standard Civivi kind of stuff and and we kind of things going on here. Uh, well, this one's hollow ground, so it's going to be a little thicker behind the edge. But yeah, it, it does feel like a lot of other uh, Civivis. Let me pull another one of these guys out here. Uh, how about that cogent that I was uh, just talking about that I had? Uh, yeah, this is uh, actually... A little bit thicker behind the edge on the cogent here than it is uh, down here. This thing comes down crazy, crazy thin. So that's that's pretty neat to see. Uh, this is kind of, uh, it does have a little bit of uh, reminiscence to me of, let's see if I can't find it here. I think it's the TS-117, also known as the Grandpa. It's a Max Chatuk design. Let's see. Yeah. Similar in the fact that uh, they both kind of look a little bit like uh, more traditional pocket knife designs. Obviously, this one has all sorts of crazy trailing point uh, edge, whereas this one here is a little bit different. Mine's in uh, 14C28N, but uh, the newer versions of this are in M390. No, this is still an absolutely amazing choice if you want something that's just a little bit uh thinner of a knife it's a it's a fantastic one and this one seems to uh tick a lot of those same boxes there i suppose i shall uh take a look for uh any kind of uh surface scratches since this is a 14c28m but uh hey at least this one looks to be good it's not to say that I won't accidentally scratch the thing up when I actually use it a little bit. Uh, yeah, about the only negative I can really say is that this pocket clip could use a little bit more downward force. Very easy for me to fix after the fact, so not, nothing uh, super crazy there. Yeah, they both kind of have that uh, open thing there because that's uh, we have the stop pin that's internal to the blade. That certainly helps with uh, back and forth blade play overall. But... Uh, you know, it's still a little bit easier for uh, dirt and debris to get in there if you're uh, carrying it around in a pocket or something like that. Again, another trade-off, just like um, pushing that forward and having the uh, the detent hole uh, open there. But, yeah, quite happy with that. Uh, I 
feel kind of like I would like uh, some jumping uh, back here. It doesn't have any per se, so I mean, you know, if you're using it in a in a pinch grip, which I find I generally do a lot more than a lot of the other grips uh, on a knife, uh, it's easier if I'm cutting something like that. Whether I'm cutting, uh, well, usually I am cutting towards myself when I'm opening, a, you know, a box package or something like that. Um, so doing that's fine enough, and starting that before I do that, or flip it around and uh, pull it out. But, uh, yeah, this thing is uh, nice and comfortable on all of those sort of things. Uh, I did, just the other day, speaking of this designer, uh, D. Antimanov, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm guaranteed not to have, though. Um, I did actually purchase another knife from him. Um, it's, uh, it's a Y-Start design, uh, amazingly, that uh, they've actually attributed to a designer. So I don't know if they're looking a little bit more into that rather than just doing some... Um, uh, you know, internal in-house designs or whatnot, but it looked pretty neat. It's a, uh, it's a Warncliffe, maybe about the same or maybe a little bit smaller version than this. Titanium, 14C28N, and, uh, I got carbon fiber, but they also have that, uh, multicolor, um, uh, G10 sort of thing going on there, and it's a button lock. Um, uh, it just looked interesting to me, and, um, uh, I've only really played around with a couple of Y-Start designs, and uh, they're okay, but this one really looked interesting. So, yeah, I'll, I'll see it in, I don't know, maybe two months or something like that, because I got it off of um, AliExpress. But, uh, hey, that's something to look forward to. Yeah, pretty darn neat. I still think, overall, um, this guy from Max Chachuk, uh, the, the grandpa here, as it's, uh, you can even see that on the clip there, um... For me, just a little bit more comfortable in the hand, and of course, that tip works out a little bit better. This is um, maybe a little bit more uh, useful if you're doing um, uh, skinning, uh, especially around uh, the scalp and horns and stuff like that, because you can easily get up onto that tip that's up there to protect it so you don't accidentally poke something you're not supposed to. Usually that'll be internal organs if you're uh, processing an animal or something like that. Yeah, whatever. But, uh, sweet. I got a couple of, uh, pretty awesome knives on me today. Yeah, I still am, uh, liking this one quite a bit. I do think they, they ended up making something very similar that had a locking mechanism to it. But hell if I can actually remember exactly what it was. And I think they, they definitely increased the thickness on it from, uh, from that one. But, uh, that's okay. It's still... A really attractive piece. Yeah. Sweet. All right. So that's going to be it. Hopefully this is going to be it for um, the ones that I have coming out uh, or for this particular video here. Uh, I do have some more knives on the way. Like I said, I have that uh, Y start one from uh, the same designer. Uh, and I also have... Uh, I think five other Tucson's coming, including uh, one that I probably spent too much money on, but it is a Titanium Integral one that they haven't done for quite a while. Um, I think it's the uh, 265 or 365. I don't remember exactly, but it was carbon fiber, titanium um, thing there with a M390 blade, and they uh, uh, did a blue... Um, uh, anodized uh, color to the titanium there but it was also like 275 bucks or something like that and that's definitely going to hit my most expensive knife um the the one prior to that being the uh the spyderco shaman <laughs> and uh s90v and burlap micarta so oh those should be interesting but yeah they're still a ways out so alrighty, i will stop rambling this video has probably gone on way too damn long but, uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and leave it at that, and I'll do the, uh, the cut test for these guys to uh, mesh up into that other one there. So, uh, yeah, as always, I appreciate y'all for watching, and have yourself a wonderful rest of your day, yo. And subscribe.